Hello. Welcome back. I wish you could all come in and have a cup of tea with me um, and on this cold, blustery February afternoon. I'm drinking vanilla almond from the Republic of Tea. It's delightful and lightly sweet. Um, I don't add any sweetener to it. I just put add some oat milk and it's just perfect for a cold afternoon. Um, I wanted to talk today a little bit. I thought it'd be fun to do uh, five bookish, five-ish bookish um, recommendations for this time of year, just to kind of beat the winter blues. Um, January, February, you know, is such a in-between time, kind of, um, just with the holiday seasons and the sparkle gone, past, and, you know, the green, hopeful spring ahead. It's always a little hard for me to, and I live in the northern Midwest U.S., so it's hard for me sometimes just to keep a positive outlook. So I'm always trying to find little things to help. And so one of those things is this tea. So it was the, this is the one I was talking about. And I really like this. Um, I want to give it as gifts too. It'd be a great gift. Um, so first, the first author I want to talk about, is, I'm sure some of you are familiar with her, but her name is Susan Branch. She's an author, illustrator, um, very whimsical, sweet, and these two books that I'm going to show you are part of her, and I'm counting this as one. That's why I said five-ish. But um, this is part of her like three book series on just memoir type uh, things of her life. This one's a little sadder, but it is so beautiful. And if you're creative, like if you're a writer or you create art of any sort, um, I really think you'll appreciate this. Um, Susan is going through a rough divorce and just wants a change and so she packs up her bags and moves all the way across the country. She moved from California to Martha, Martha's Vineyard. She had some family connections there so that's kind of why she chose it but um, she decides I'm going to stay here for three months. I'm going to kind of work on healing and just I want somewhere to be somewhere where there's seasons and she ends up staying. She, uh, this is right in the beginning of the book, so it's not too giving away too much, but here is the little cottage and that's her. So these are done in her own handwriting with all her beautiful little illustrations. There's photographs, just beautiful whimsical things. Um, I'll show you the opening of this. It's so, so cute. She has maps that she's hand done. There's Martha's Vineyard. And just a, such a beautiful collection of quotes. That's one thing I really enjoy about Susan Branch is that she's a quote hound like me. So that one is a little sadder, but it's actually probably my favorite of all of her books I've ever read because I felt it just so raw and real and genuine and just, I felt for her, I felt sad for her. Um, but the one, the, the one that I also love is this and her and her um, um, her love, Joe, going on a trip to England and mainly the Lake District and a lot of the places that I was able to see like Hilltop Cottage and Hilltop Farms, which is Beatrix Potter's place. And this is just a whole bunch of the same, just beautiful and a lot of photographs of England, um, just lovely quotes, the people she met recipes, things that they ate. She, they took the, a boat to, um, to, so that was part of their trip was going across the Atlantic, which was really interesting because, you know, usually we fly, but they just took the boat and just about our art. And um, so I highly, highly recommend Susan Branch for this time of year. So cheerful, bright, just like a pot of, you know, like a vase of daffodils on your table. Um, this also is, um, I'm using this as my, I checked this out from my public library. There's some ladies that are wanting to show our local libraries a little love. And so I think it starts in like Fe February 6th, so um, this Sunday, um, they're starting lo Library Love Readathon. And the two people, there's a whole bunch of hosts, but I heard about it through Taking Tea with Catherine. And one of her prompts, I think, is like something warm, curled with something warm in a book or something like that. And so I'm gonna use this one for that. So, and then this one counts for my February uh, Read Your Book Shelf from um, Chantel at Chantel Reads A Lot. And she, um, she uh, 
I, I, fe I feel like, I'm trying to think what I'm trying to say. Well, this is on my shelf. So I've read this many times, but I'm rereading it for that. So um, I wanted to talk also about someone who I actually, because Susan is such a quote, uh, quote hound, I heard about this person through the quotes that she kept putting. And her name is Gladys Tabor. And she was a memoirist. I always forget how to say that, memoirist, um, in, out east. I feel like it's Connecticut, but I'm gonna say it wrong. I should know that. And mainly she wrote like daily-ish sort of memoirs from like the 1940s and 50s. She did write some short fiction and I've tried that and it was maybe not for me. I do have, I think I have a couple and I have one that is short stories that I would like to try sometime. But her name is Gladys Tabor and these are just so lovely. So Gladys and her friend Jill went through, both went through pretty rough divorces in New York and they decided to go in and purchase a farm in the country. And so they did. And, you know, a lot of it was done much more by hand and, you know, work, you worked really hard. Um, although they did have some conveniences too, but it, these are just lovely. And they're usually set up monthly or quarterly, like seasonally. And I absolutely adore stuff like that. And so you get the weather, you get what they're cooking, very domestic, just lovely, funny. The only thing I wish was there were more children because she has, they raise dogs and that's really cute. So if you're a dog person or a cat person, because our cats, you will really enjoy all her animals antics. A um, lot of like, just talk about books and their neighbors. They would get really close to a lot of their neighbors. Um, my, I have quite a few in my collection, but my favorite I think is this one. And her friend lives at a farm called Sugar, Sugar Bridge and she lives at Still Meadow, of course. And these are letters back and forth between her and her friend, Barbara. And it's just lovely. And there she has, a, this one's monthly, and she has um, Edward Shenton's illustrations, I think in most of the memoirs, and they're just really lovely. They're pen and ink um, type illustrations, and I just really enjoy them. So here's some of the, um, the animals. And so that is definitely a cold January, February um, mood lifter is Gladys Tabor. And for many years, I would just pick one off my shelf and I would read whatever month we were in, or I would go to whatever season, you know, if it was set up seasonally. And it was just such a lovely thing just to kind of be along with somebody going through the same things like plowing snow and just noticing the cardinals on the snow and, you know, just little things like that. And she has a lot of quotes too. So, um, the, and now the next person is one of my absolute favorites because this gal, it was sort of like, she gave me permission to be myself. And that person, her name is Jane Brackett. And this is my most favorite, one of my most favorite nonfiction books of all time. And my sisters laugh so hard about the title, The Gentle Art of Domesticity, Stitching, Baking, Nature, Art, and the Comforts of Home. So Miss, Mrs. Brackett was a PhD um, academic and wine um, connoisseur of some sort, maybe even a wine judge or something. And she was kind of living the fast life and she enjoyed it and she was did a wonderful job. She's from England. And at some point she realized, you know what? You know what I want to do with my life? I want to home make. And she just has such a smart, fun, unique approach to homemaking, the arts, baking, sewing. I mean, she does everything. And she's a wonderful photographer, so you get a lot of that. And she's obsessed with patterns, and I love it. And she's obsessed with color. And so this time of year, if you feel a little bit of bleakness and darkness, which I usually do, I just brew myself some coffee, light a candle, and dip into this book. Um, she has so many recommendations for old-fashioned, lovely films, books, um, just just neat essays about what it means to, you know, choose as a woman to choose to be a homemaker. I don't think that's as the most popular decision, but it still is, you know, a woman's choice to choose to. Um, 
you know, home make. And I think that's so lovely and, and neat that, you know, it's validated in some ways. Um, I highly recommend this. Be forewarned, you will walk away with so many um, recommendations for things. Um, and um, so, and my other, she has quite a few books, but I think my other, my, the, my two favorite are that and her quilt making one, which the, the patterns are very simple, but she uses very bright, brilliant fa uh, fabric. And that is sort of my style. I'm not very intricate quilter. And I just love how she, what she does with fabric. So here she made one out of her husband's old ties. So really neat. And I really enjoy Jane Brackett. Her uh, Instagram is also really lovely. And then the next ones, I am an adult who actually loves picture books. And so the next one is, um, I only have three of her books. And the, my most favorite is The Maggie Bee by Eileen Haas. And it is just delightful about family and um, a sister and a brother and just imagination. And her watercolor type illustrations are just so homey and delightful. I really want to just jump into them. Um, she makes uh, she makes soup for her for her brother on their little ship and she gives them a bath and stuffed peaches and stuff and oh my goodness it's just so lovely I can't stand it I actually found another copy of this book that was falling apart at a, like a thrift store or a yard sale and I framed some of the pictures because I love them so much so I highly recommend Eileen Haas and she has a couple more that I have I know she has some more but they're really hard to find this is the Little Moon Theater which is like a little a little wagon that they go traveling and then this one is a summertime song so delightful and I just will sit and look at these for a while and then um, I love woodcut art and this is my last my uh, last recommendation for some hidden gems I love the woodcut art of Mary Azarian um, and this one's lovely. Someone else wrote some essays about, uh, it's the four seasons, and you get her woodcuts. Some are black and white, and then some are color, and sometimes I'll just display these, this book. I'll just display it like on my table or something because it just cheers me up so much, and she does wonderful things with light and the moon. Um, even the winter... Um, pictures with the moon are, are just stunning because you can really see the light of the moon shining just shining on the snow which I think is so lovely so I highly uh, recommend checking into her work and she has I know she has a couple alphabet books which we really love and we check out from the library occasionally so that is my main recommendations. I do give an honorable mention to this one, which I just got. This is lovely, and we've been, I've been displaying this. It's got some poetry and some beautiful art in it. Um, and um, then uh, I also recommend, as a free, as another little extra, I highly recommend The Cloud of Witness. It follows the Christian church here, and it's just lovely. And in conjunction to this, I also recommend, it doesn't, it's not connected with this, but there is an app called PrayAsYouGo.org. And it is the, it's the following the Christian church year. And they have short prayers and music and just kind of like, it'll have instrumental music sometimes just like to meditate on the scripture that they read. And I believe it's out of the UK and it's the Jesuits that run it. And it's just lovely. I really have really enjoyed that. Um, I wanted to read you, hopefully I can read it well, but just a short snippet um, by Robert Browning that's in here. And it's just so beautiful and it just really blessed me this time of year. Even in my brightest time, a lurking fear possessed me. I well knew my weak resolves. I felt the witchery which made my mind sleep over its treasure as one half afraid to make his riches definite. But now these feelings shall not be utterly shall not utterly be lost, for I, having thus again been visited, shall doubt not many another bliss awaits, and though this weak soul sink and darkness come, some little word shall light it up again, 
and I shall see all clearer and love better, and unknown secrets will be trusted me, which were not mine when waving, wavering. And I just thought, you know, this time of year, any kind of, anything that flashes out at us, you know, and just lifts our spirits and, uh, you know, promises a little light ahead on the journey is just lovely. And so that is, I think that's all of my, I wanted to uh, kind of uh, just share those. Um, and hopefully I will be back on Friday with my Friday reads. And most of it is just kind of moving along and some of the things I've chosen for Feb Regency, which I'm really excited about and really enjoying. So hopefully I'll be back on Friday. So I will say uh, have a good afternoon and cheers.